you will forgive me and bear with me as uh, 2020, you know, just kicked off and everyone's all excited. Oh, it's a new decade, new everything. And yeah, it's cool. And, you know, to be honest, I really haven't been feeling the, uh, the hours alone in the room just putting together these videos. So I haven't really been doing that. I'm working on Jen, spending like 10 hours a day in the garage working on Genevieve. And there's all these videos for Bruce that we've got to get out. And to be honest, it's very respectful of me to just keep it real with y'all on how I just am not up to the solitude. Oh, it's wearing me out. Anyway, let's get on with um, episode six. Here we go. I went to the upholstery shop and uh, dropped off the seats so that they could make them look pretty as they do their best work and they got the new foam and new skins and yada yada yada. That's when I still had the Lexus. And uh, cool, everything looks good. They t discussed a few options and we're gonna have some problems. We will come up to that in a minute. And then I took a plane flight all the way to California for some fun events. We actually had to go through this wind farm of danger to pick up some Volvo books and check out this 2600 that the old man Bruce was restoring for the owner of Genevieve. And uh, it's a good looking car, but boy, this place is creepy down in the Salton Desert. But he had a bunch of magazines for us, so we collected some Volvo magazines and uh, got to see some cool new stuff. And I actually haven't read a single one of these articles, but you know what, it's nice to have them. And then I went and took this Lancia for a drive, and um, I think there was a car show or something that year, and we just kind of had fun with it. It's a V4. V4s are weird. They really like to, I don't know, drive like a normal engine, I guess. And um, yeah, you can really romp on this little Italian beauty. Many, many hours spent underneath this dashboard working on this little car. And then I took a plane flight again back home to New Mexico. This was um, the tarmac is where we started and then we went up to the sky and there were clouds. And then all of a sudden the clouds started to move really, really quickly. And that's when I realized we're probably gonna land this bird pretty soon. So here we are back on the ground and in New Mexico, look, I found some old Volvos. Somebody's got an Amazon locally in Albuquerque, that's cool. Anyway, I'm back in California. That's where I live now and this is where we're going to uh, not actually pick up that's all been one really long run on sentence, and um, there were some issues with the seats. Here they are. All right, here's the boys working hard at Gotcha Covered Upholstery. Nice place. There's supposed to be a problem here with these seat covers being different. I can't see what they're talking about. I'll tell you what they're talking about. You see the seat here, the frame is black on the sides and later cars had uh, just a pillow type cushion. So that means that the bottom cushion snaps onto the frame as visualized right here. And uh, that was all fine and dandy. That's what I'm used to seeing most American cars. But pre-1964 actually had a different style of seat. Uh, another missing piece here is the actual upholstery on the side. You see at the bottom of where the black frame was here on this picture, it's matching the seat upholstery. That needs to be actually remedied. But more to the point, we have an early 60s car that has these rounded, more, I call horseshoe style bottom frames where the upholstery wraps around the frame. And a fine example here on this PV544, you can see on the inside of the seat, the upholstery wraps around the seat frame instead of being a snap-on type cushion. I can't find frames. It's impossible to find a replacement frame and we've already got these old frames powder coated and ready to go. Let's improvise. This is the top cover on the back side. Yes, it looks like the uh, older, I don't know if this was OEM or a recover at some point, but it looks pretty OEM. But it's got these nice cutouts here on the side and this is just a solid slip over. And um, the real difference is on the bottom one. See how it's sort of like a pillowcase, if you will. It just, uh, you stuff the foam in there and then you hog tie it all along that rim. Hog tie, hog rings. And hog rings are these little guys. Yep. They look like little tusks of a boar, okay? Um, so here's the new one, and it's um, an open bottom design, whereas Genevieve has a closed bottom just like this. So of course, you know, when you're dealing with an older model, original seats aren't always in place. So that being said, this is probably, you know, like a mid 60s and newer style here versus what we've got on this one. For the sake of it mounting, the, um, all the bolts and the hardware and everything should work the same. He said what he's gonna have to do is probably just change the foam that goes inside the seat, modify it, or if it requires too much modification, just make your own foam. They've got rolls and rolls of this stuff because it's just an upholstery shop. That's what they do. They've got, look, a sample of things because it's official. Well, I should know, I used to work here. So that's going to be a little different. I think these 
little things just button into the seat frame somewhere. And then of course it wraps around the back seat frame. On this one, there's none of that. So the question is, you know, how do you mount these to the seat frame? We'll have to get the seat frame out here and find out. Some time has passed and I brought over the back seats for both cars. Economies of scale had us bringing all the upholstery for both vehicles at the same time. When everything is fresh in their minds, they're able to do the upholstery pretty quickly. That back handle on Genevieve's upper rear seat, it's missing. So uh, two years on down the road, I still have to find that, but I digress. Be close, but no, no grain. That one's got a different grain. You know, this is like more of a Chevy. <laughs> we tried to match the upholstery to the uh, year correct red color we wanted, and the catalog couldn't. You know what's weird is that you look at this, and that's a whole different vinyl right there. Oh, don't you just want to jump in this? I don't want to tell him that I just picked the color that I liked, because I'm trying to make it period correct, but everything's newer on this car, because that's just how it was. So there's some issues, you know, we have a back seat that actually does work with the VP kit. All back seats are pretty much the same year to year. It's just the front seat, so we're gonna have to do some custom work and order a roll of vinyl from VP directly. It's hot in here, and that's bad news. Basically to make this into a horseshoe, yeah. And then put the pleats here and then just follow this same shape mm -hmm. so that we get that square shape rather than the round. And we'll round off these corners more and just keep these square because this has a certain shape to it. Yeah, and it matches you the know. foam and the seat cover. And so frame. that that way we can use, you know, these frames. Oh. I had to do on that other one, but um, you know, this will come up to about here rather than there, you know. So We'll bring that up and follow through. And then the same thing there, you know, have the welt, and then it'll have the stitch here. Boy, it'll have that, that new contour with the old look. That's fun. Yeah, I mean, that's that's gonna be the solution that I could come up with. And then this way, you know, this, this these back seats, we're not worried about those. We know those will fit. Yeah. Um, so I guess what, we're, what we need to do is order some of that vinyl. Okay. We did place an order for the vinyl and then I left everything alone for them to do their work. I'm very proud of our boys for actually taking the effort. Here you can see the differences, rounded versus squareded. Take a picture of this bottom and this bottom and show it to them. Yeah. Send them pictures because they're gonna want pictures. So we've got the snaps. And maybe they might even make that same style of horse answer to fit that one. But if they don't, you know, those are really good patterns to go off of. Man. We, okay. could, we could easily do the Yes. Yeah. And put this, this design on it, you know. So ask them what their return policy is. So if you're completely lost in what we're doing here, it's okay. We're making the pillow type bottom basically the rounder type which was the wraparound and um, it's a custom bottom seat. So the whole seat is going to be basically a hybrid. It's going to look like a 62 with a 64 plus frame. Here's the old covers we brought last year. It's already uh, January 18th today. There's the old material. Old, old foams. Tops haven't been done yet, but I want to show you what the new stuff looks like. No, I'm just kidding, it's over here. Looking sharp, BP. BP Auto Parts uses a um, the material comes from Sweden, which is why it's been in the shop so long, because I had to order a roll of this. Because our goal for the fronts was to match a custom bottom cushion, as you recall me talking about that earlier in the video. We wanted our bottom cushions to match the later style years, because you can't find the early style ones that don't have a, a pillow style, you know, with the snaps. So that's all custom made. But. That's what it looks like. You can see why the later years seats are a little bit more comfortable because they're not so flat. But this keeps the originality of it and uh, I like it. A little loose in the middle here, but that's okay. It gives you a little room for your fat butt to squish in. And I'm saying yours for everyone. 
We all got big fat butts. Now the VP vinyl isn't the uh, best stuff on the market. Let me see if I can show you an example. The backing on the vinyl the VP uses. Uh, the easiest way to put it is the VP vinyl is kind of thin. The stuff, you know, if it hits a snag, it could rip kind of easily versus versus other vinyls that look like this. This allows a lot more stretch, pliability, and support. The latter type vinyl is like an elastic. It's so strong. It's um, actually quite incredible. But you know, there's a variety of manufacturers globally, so I still think it's an all right option. It's much better than uh, whatever you could find on your own, I'm, I'm sure. I'm happy with the work. And is this a new, this is a new piece as well? Or is that yeah, the old? Okay. I'm pretty happy with the way everything turned out. I didn't get a lot of pictures of what it looks like underneath the skins. This is Genevieve's upper seat on the right. That's the old foam, the old webbing underneath. We'll cover all that in a later video as I reassemble the seats for Bruce. In the meantime. Pulled the car out of the garage. What a feeling just to get started again. And um, let me show you around. Yeah, it's going to be really good to get back to wrenching on the car itself and not dealing with the shop and uh, travel back and forth. So that all happens uh, later toward the summer of 2019. So we are going to uh, pick up on the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Hit subscribe as usual, and we'll see you in the next video. If you haven't seen any of the previous episodes or other projects over the years for all the various Volvos, etc., click on the links down in the description box. Thanks, everybody.